Hi everybody. Happy Monday night. Say hi if you're here. Let me know if you're watching and where you're watching from. I am going to be doing a special angel wing project tonight and I did a custom design on my Cricut. I'm going to talk a little bit about how I did that um, and share my little tips and tricks with you tonight for that. Um, I Sometimes I get obsessed with creating things with angel wings. I don't know why. I just think they're so special, I guess. And there's so many different ways that you can paint them and use them. Hi, Beth. How are you tonight? Um, so say hi, and I would love to know where you're watching from. Um, so yeah, so we're gonna be working on an angel wing project. And um, those of you that are in my DIY decor makers group, you will get the um, hand-drawn SVG file for this uh, at some point soon, probably tomorrow. Um, hi, Holly. So those of you that are new here, my name is Rita Freecott and I own Picked and Polished. I'm also the owner and creator of the DIY Decor Makers Group. And that's a private paid community where I teach women how to use their Cricut machine to create beautiful stencils. Um, and then from there, they can make beautiful decor for their home. They can make decor to sell in their business or they can use that um, those decor ideas to offer DIY workshops and inspire other women. So um, tonight we're gonna be working on a project that I actually designed with my Apple Pencil. Um, but you, if you have a Cricut at home um, and you go into um, the Cricut Access, you can find Angel Wing SVG files already made for your $9.99 a month subscription there. Um, hi Mary, how are you? Um, but I'm gonna show you, so this isn't like a, sometimes when I'm painting something, I need a great outline for it, right? And the angel wings that I found on the Cricut Access design space, in design space, weren't exactly what I was looking for. And I had done a painting um, uh, some time ago, and I used an app called Procreate on my, on my iPad, and it just sort of traced my design. So if you, it's called Procreate, P-R-O-C-R-E-A-T. Um, and I can't remember, I think I paid for it wasn't like a crazy amount of money. Um, and then I have an Apple Pencil and I was able to trace over my original painting and get the same form and shape of my angel wings. And then I was able to create an SVG file with it and split it, which is a technique I just taught all my DIY divas how to do in my group this past week, um, so that I can make a meaningful gift out of it. So when I'm done, my painting is not gonna look as simplistic as this, but sometimes, um, I want something, I want to paint something, but I need a little bit of form to work with. And that's when sometimes you can use your Cricut and customize a stencil to create like an outline for something. And that's exactly what this stencil is gonna to be tonight for me. It's gonna be an outline for a painting that I wanna do. And on the inside of these two lines is gonna be a quote or maybe somebody's date um, or maybe somebody that lost somebody. Maybe it's gonna be their birthday or their name. Um, there's a million ways you can customize this type of a thing and make it super meaningful as a gift. Um, so I did that on my iPad, you can see here, and I split the angel wing design and created a little um, bar kind of in between where I could put like a quote or something meaningful on the inside. So hi Marie, how are you tonight? Hi Gail. So be sure to sprinkle this video out there, hit that button, so that I can um, continue to share free tutorials with you every Monday night at eight. So um, we're gonna get started. If you're, like I said before, if you're a DIY diva and you're in my paid group, I will upload this file for you so you can use it. And again, this isn't like a fancy angel wing file. It's just, I'm using it tonight as a, basically as an outline. And then if I wanna put a quote or something in here, I'll use my Cricut again and design something to go in here. But um, there's so many nice things you could put in the center of these angel wings to make it really special for somebody. Um, so I thought this would be a great last minute sort of gift idea. Um, I'm gonna show you kind of how I fill in the angel wings and how I kind of, you know, we'll just play around with it tonight. I don't have like an exact science for this. Um, so I have this board. It's a, let's see, I'm going to say it's about a 12 by 12. Um, and I just used Dixie Bell's Hurricane Gray, a little bit watered down. And then I went over it with some Midnight Sky, again, a little bit watered down. I wanted to have like a sort of 
um, flowy, blended sort of feel. Um, thank you, Beth. I appreciate that. So if while I'm working tonight, if you guys have any questions about anything, let me know. I'd be happy to answer them. And if I miss them while I'm working, I can always go back later on to answer your comments. So if you see the little red button up in the corner, you're watching me live. Um, if you don't see that you're on replay, you can hashtag replay and still feel free to ask any questions that you have, okay? So you can hear my little ones giggling. It's anybody else have little ones around that are, it's the, you know, the week before Christmas vacation, everybody's getting a little silly and they're, you know, they want to stay up late and do extra fun things. So that's kind of been happening around my house lately. Hi Nadine. All right, so I've got my stencil that I cut and I weeded, I pulled out the areas that I want paint to cover. I use 631 stencil vinyl and I use a paper tape. They're in my Amazon shop, picked and polished with Rita. If you Google that, that should come up or you go to Amazon and type that in. Um, you'll know what materials that I use for my stencil. It's a vinyl one-time use stencil. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull the camera down and I'll show you how I apply the angel wings. And then I'm just gonna use this stencil, like I said, as an outline almost for what I wanna do next. I'm gonna be filling this in with some layers, um, making this look kind of feathery, pulling some lines down on either side of the wings and doing some extra things. So this is just kind of like the bones of the project here. Hi, Denise. Hi, Donna. Thanks for hopping on tonight, ladies. So I think this would be a really nice gift to give anybody that, um, you know, the holiday season sometimes is a nice time to remember those special people in your life that you're missing. It can be a hard time for that reason, but it also can be a great time to kind of celebrate maybe some memories you have made in the past with the people that you love during this time of year. So I think angel wings are just really um, significant and symbolic this time of year too. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull my camera down. If you guys have questions, let me know as usual. All right, so here we go. We've got my angel wings here and I've got it sticky side up. I pulled the backing off already, pulled that off. Usually I go step by step. I don't know why I just pulled that off without showing you. But um, So I just pulled my backing off of my three-part stencil. And right now I have the stencil side up and I've got my transfer tape down. So I'm gonna go ahead and place my wings. I'm gonna be doing a lot of shading with this. I probably won't finish it tonight but I just thought it would be um, you know, something for you guys to think about if you're you know, stuck and you wanna make something special for someone that you love, this might be a great, uh, a great sort of thing you can do. All right. And if I can share this angel wing um, stencil, I will on my main page, but I'm not sure I'll be able to, so all right. So I'm gonna go ahead and just lay that down and get it where I want it to be. Rub that down. Whoops, hold on, I lost the comments here. Shoot, shoot the goo. Um, sorry guys. All right, well I can't see the comments right now. I don't know why. I just hit something and they disappeared, hold on. Um, this hasn't happened to me before. Yeah, I swiped. Maybe if I just swipe right, I don't know. Really? I don't see him. My tech expert, Jason's in the background trying to help me. Um, all right, so if you guys have comments, leave them in the feed and I'll go back and, you know, reply to them when I'm finished, okay? Because I can't see anybody's comments right now because I messed up the screen. All right, so I'm just going to pull my transfer tape off. I'm just going to put some pressure to it, pull that down and off the board. And it looks pretty straight. Make sure that that's straight. Um, and I'm going to start with the white. Um, got my Apple Pencil here. I'm gonna definitely want to get that out of the way. I don't want that to get wet or ruined. So I'm just gonna take like a smaller pointed tipped brush and um, go ahead and get started with some of the Dixie Belle fluff. And this is just gonna kind of be like, um, like an outline. And then I'll have something to go with to fill it in. 
And I like to create a lot of texture on the wings and a lot of different designs with smaller micro brushes. So we'll go ahead and do that. I'm gonna, I think for this, I don't want it to be, I don't want it to be like super solid. So I'm just gonna give it a really dry brush sort of finish. Um, and again, this is just, if you have an iPad, you can download the app Procreate. If you have an Apple Pencil, you can draw whatever you want and then make it into a SVG file. Um, and I teach women how to do all kinds of cool stuff with their Cricut machines so that they can make their own customized stencils with um, vinyl or with reusable Mylar. So I'm gonna go ahead and just kinda, do you see how I'm not really like covering the entire thing? I'm just kinda, I'm using a dry brush, like I always say, dry, dry brush. Less is more with the paint. Um, and I'm just kind of giving it like a dry brush sort of look so that when I pull this up, I don't have, I don't want like a really hard line um, from the stencil. I kind of want it to be soft and kind of fill this line in. And so you can probably see from the camera that I'm not really filling it in all the way. Okay. I'm gonna pull up my iPad that's next to me and see if I can see your comments there too. So I'll just get this filled in first and then I'll go see if I can pull it up. Actually, honey, do you mind pulling up my page to see? I don't know how much juice I have left on that iPad though. Uh oh. Anybody else out there really bad about plugging in their devices other than me? You're the worst. Jason said I'm the worst. You hear him whispering in the background. <laughs> this thing I'll have like five different devices going. Oh, I'll be dead this or dying. Huh? This doesn't pay okay. Sorry. Well, if you have your phone, I can use that. If that's not. You're the responsible one in this house. All right. So again, I'm not really filling in all my lines heavily. I'm leaving some of them out a little bit. It's uneven and that's the way I want it to be. And I don't have like a total complete vision for this yet. It's gonna kind of evolve as I go, I think. All right, oh, awesome. Okay, I can see you guys now. So I can see your comments and questions. So feel free to ask away. So now I'm gonna go ahead and pull this up. Jason says, thanks to him. He wants everyone to know. <laughs> All right. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead. Hi, Lori. Thanks for hopping on tonight. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and peel up that vinyl and you see how that's just gonna leave this is just gonna leave me with a very like um basic outline nothing fancy sort of childlike style i guess um and then i'm gonna make it different as i go okay so and i might trim up my board a little bit we'll see i might want to do some shading though so kind of left some space around my angel wings so I could do a little bit of shading if I wanted to or whatever and go over the um, go over the dark color. So um, <clears throat> I am gonna go ahead and take one of my smaller brushes and usually what I do when I'm painting angel wings is I'll, I take this basic pattern and then and you can do them a million different ways but this is just how I like to do it. And once I have the outline done, I like to take my, um, my fine point brush and just kind of make more swooping sort of marks across the top, just kind of like that. Um, and I'll go ahead and do that with some more of the white, the fluff here. And to get a more um, light look, I'll probably dampen the paint just a bit with my mister. Get a little bit of water on that brush. And then I can go ahead and just kind of, just kind of make those little scallops going across. And I don't want them to be perfect. 
Um, this is like too perfect in my opinion, like too, not perfect, but too kind of cookie cutter. So I'll have to go over that and kind of blend that out a little bit probably. Um, just gonna give a little bit of texture to the wings. Same thing here. Okay, so I've got my little like floaty feathers up top. Um, and then what I usually do is I'll take right where I have the little scalloped points there, I'll take those and follow my lines down and then down again. And I'm not, again, I'm not looking for like a super even, I'm gonna have them curve just a little bit, just a, a little bit of curve to those, curving outward a little bit. And then kind of go down the middle of those lines, just like that, okay? Um, and this is a really like simple way to draw angel wings. I'm not, t like you guys know that have been following me for any length of time, I don't consider myself like any, by any stretch of the imagination, like a, a freehand artist. Um, but I do enjoy it, so, and I'm trying to learn more on how to get better at it. I'm always trying to, you know, stretch myself a little bit and learn new things. So, um, and this one, this one I curved out, this one I curved in, so maybe I'll pull these in a little bit. It's never, you know, you can, you can move your lines a little bit, especially with something like this, because um, I want it to be sort of free flowing anyway. So I'm gonna pull those lines up in a little bit. Okay, and the same thing here. I'm gonna go ahead and just do something in the middle. Pull those down. And I just keep my brush, um, I keep water on my brush. Hi, Ann. Hi, Deb. Uh, just to kind of keep the paint looking a little bit uneven. Again, I don't consider myself like a, you know, freehand artist or anything like that, but I do enjoy it. So I try to learn new things here and there. So this is a real basic, you know, kind of outline for an angel wing. Um, and then what I can do from there is I can kind of go into, I'm gonna be filling, I'm gonna, so basically what I'm gonna be doing is giving this like a basic texture, and then I'm gonna be going over it with some layers. So these lines that look really, really hard and sort of simple will kind of blend in and get brushed away, but you'll still be able to see them in the background. Um, and for these, I think, I'll keep doing some of my little, just kind of fill those in a little bit, a little use. So if I can paint angel wings, I feel like anybody can paint angel wings because I'm not really, it's not what I usually do. Okay. Then I think about the feathers, like these longer pieces being like the long feathers. And um, I like to give them a little bit of like texture this way, like, um, like you would see on a feather that you found, just a little bit. And it's all like these little detail things that when you start adding them up, they can create a whole um, sort of layered feeling to your wings. Let me know if you guys have questions. Right now I'm just um, doing my little V's on my feathers. It's like you see those feathers, you know, the spines in them, and then you, if you look at them carefully, you see the little V's that are on them. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. It's just adding a little bit of interest and texture to the wings. Same thing here, I'm just gonna, and I'm gonna fill that in and do another little strip here. Move only a little V's, V, 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 there we go. So you can see like this side compared to this side, you can already see there's a little bit more interest on this side. We're getting somewhere, right? Just gonna continue that at the top.
Oh, Nancy, you can't get the sound. Is anybody else having trouble? I wonder that. Can you guys hear me okay tonight? Um, and then I'm just gonna kind of make some little wispy lines to fill those in. Okay, same thing over here. I'm gonna do the kind of the same idea. And remember, when I'm finished, it's gonna kind of fade. It's all gonna kind of fade away. Hi, Barbara, how are you tonight? Let's see. So same thing, I'm just gonna do some of my little Vs. I hear you, okay. Sorry, Nancy, about that. Just gonna continue down. So it's fun to kind of combine like my ability to make the stencils with a little bit of freehand too. Um, so if you're someone who likes using your Cricut, you wanna mix it up a little bit, um, you know, you can certainly combine those two things. That's the beauty of the Cricut is you can make just about anything you can imagine with it, with stencils with it. Um, or if you have a silhouette cameo, that same idea. <clears throat> and these are looking a little bit closer together and whiter than the other ones. So I'm just gonna add a little bit. And they don't, you know, they certainly don't have to be matchy matchy. They can be however you want them to look. So I'm just gonna continue down with my little V's here. And we'll just see how this kind of evolves and takes off. Okay. Fill in some of those holes there. Same thing here. Again, I don't want it to be like the perfect, you know, um, exactly symmetrical or anything like that. I'm looking for variation. I just kind of want to keep it layer, sort of textured and layered looking. All right, so there I've got some nice texture there. Um, and then I might start thinking about doing some shading and blending when it comes to like um, my lines here and adding something here. So let's look at what I have here for product that I can work with. Um, I think I may do some filling in with some of a darker color. Let's see what happens with that. I'm just going to take a little bit of the midnight sky and I've got a little bit of the um, fluff on my brush. I'm just going to kind of give it some more texture with this brush here. I soften up those lines a little bit. And I could just keep kind of layering, layering over that. Just like that, no like real science to it. Same thing down the front here. I'll just kind of use my wider brush and pull that down a little bit. Take some more though. I think I'm gonna try some silver glaze just to kind of soften up my lines a little bit. It's more like a whitish silver. Add a little bit of water to it. And then I'm gonna start using some of the dark, darker color. And I've also got the, the wax. I'll use, I'll kind of blend out my edges here um, eventually. I soften that up with a little bit of the silver, just so it kind of like peeks through. You can't really see it, probably can't see it on camera. Um, <clears throat> all right, so now I'm gonna take some more of the white, kind of blend out my edges, because I just, I think I just don't want them to be so hard. So I'm gonna get my brush nice and wet and just kind of pull, see what happens. It might be a hot mess, it might not. Just kind of, give my edges a little bit of like more of a feathered, so 
sort of feel. Whereas like right now they're really sort of hard looking. I just want to kind of soften them up and pull that out. So see the difference there? Like this is going to feel more feathery. This is going to feel a little bit harder. And I can kind of pull out that edge a little bit. And I'm using these as like, I'm using these lines that are already here for my stencil, kind of like as a guide. But I don't want it to feel so um, like hard around the edge like it was before. So I'll let that dry. I'll go over it here. Soften up my edges a little bit. Just kind of pulling pulling my edge out a little bit and giving it a little bit of texture. Just using those original stencil lines to kind of guide my guide my way, I guess, because I'm not really comfortable yet doing like total freehand stuff. So. All right. Hey, Amy. Doing a little bit of angel wings today. I'm just softening up my stencil edges. I took an SV, I created my own SVG file um, with my Procreate app and my Apple Pen tonight. And I'll be sharing that with those of you that are in the group also. Just kind of feathering that out a little bit. All right. A little bit more. Just kind of giving it a little bit of life there. Same thing here. And you can see I'm just kind of like pulling out the paint a little bit. It's just so it doesn't feel so hard, okay? Then I'm going to do the same thing here. All right, so it's definitely softer than it was before. And I'm going to go on the inside of my line as well and just kind of give that a little bit of a softer look too. You see how I just can like, I can kind of use my stencil line to help me at least get the form that I want, like the, the shape that I want, and then I can go from there. So the Cricut stencils can be used for a lot more than just, you know, creating uh, more clean line sort of things, I guess. Keep working that out. All right, so you can see that it's a lot softer around the edges than it was to start with, right? And then I'm gonna go in and just kind of go over those, some of those layers. So you can still like, you can still see those little um, Vs, but they're kind of hiding a little bit now behind the white layers. It's gonna be the same thing here. I'm just gonna kind of go in, pull that in from the inside, soften up that line a little bit. Um, and then I'll be using wax and, um, and layers of paint too here on this piece shortly. This is just like the very basic part of it and then I can kind of add layers as I go. And the more I feel like with painting, the more layers I add, the more interest it has and the more it feels like it starts to feel a little bit more special and kind of come to life a little bit more. It's just how I kind of feel about it when I'm painting. Even, even when I was painting furniture, I felt like that too. Like the more layers I could add, um, the more special a piece felt, the more movement it had, the more texture, all that good stuff. 
So let's see. Hi, Garland. So you can see now, like it's starting to, all those hard lines are starting to fade. And same thing with like even this line here that started me out. Um, that line there, I can kind of soften it a little with a couple brush strokes and kind of maybe give it a little bit of a thicker, more defined look there. And as you guys know, this isn't like totally in my wheelhouse, but I like to do things that are a little bit different sometimes, especially during the holidays. I think like angel wings just are so pretty. And I'm just gonna kind of using my original shape there. Um, and slowly that line is sort of fading away. Do you guys have any questions while I'm working? This is actually gonna be a gift for someone. Um, all right, so now I'm gonna kind of blend these in to hide those a little bit more, give those a little bit more texture there and I've got a little bit of water on my brush um, just to kind of keep the paint moving and around and things like that okay so as you can see it's getting a little bit softer um, I think now I probably want to go in with some black um, so that I can make that white really kind of really pop um, and then I'll do some like blending and moving things around too. And that's when it'll all kind of come together, especially when I start, I can also distress um, areas of the angel wings and that will also create, that was a little bit, it wasn't quite wet enough. So I want the paint, I don't really want like a dry brush look right now. I kind of want it to like melt together a little bit and blend. So just like when you're blending furniture, um, you want to keep that brush, you want to you wanna keep the paint moving. I'm just kind of hitting the edges just a little bit to give some variation. Patricia, I'm so glad you're loving this. I by no means am like an angel painting expert here, but we're just giving it a go tonight. I just think it's it's something fun. Like I got a, I did some of these um, not too long ago, like last year, not during the holiday though. And I got a lot of feedback from it, people wanting to learn how to do their own angel wings. And so I thought, well, Christmas time is a great time to give it a go. So do you see how even with the black, or this is actually Midnight Sky, I'm softening up those white edges too. I'm just kind of gently poking around the edge. I don't really have like, I wish I could tell you I had like a specific strategy for this, but it's more like, you know, you're just kind of feathering your, your brush as you go. And what's cool is you can still see, even though I'm covering, you can still see those um, like feather lines, but they're gonna be a little more subtle with each, each layer that I add. And so will those edge lines that we started with, right? Those will kind of fade away. Like you can see on this side, it's definitely softer um, than it was before. And I'm gonna just go ahead and try to do the same thing on this edge here, and back and forth. I feel like this one's got a little bit more white poking out. Oh, I don't know about that, Beth. I'm just kind of winging it as I go, trying new things. I was trying to kind of push the envelope, push myself out of my comfort zone. I think that's really important when you're creating too. You give yourself grace and you just keep trying. Okay, and that's what we work on too in the um, in my paid group is like that idea that we're always kind of learning and growing together and encouraging one another. 
Um, and even, like it's funny, I always say, I, I help women use their Cricut machines even if they're afraid to plug them in. <sighs> because, you know, sometimes it's just, you just need a little cheering group behind you to get you to where you wanna go. Um, it's nice to have a community of women like that that you can rely on. All right, I'm missing, I feel like the other side has a lot more white, so I'm just gonna go back in here. I don't want it to be exact, but I also don't want it to look like two totally different <clears throat> wings either. And again, I'm going in with a black here. I'm just kind of keeping with that wispy sort of U shape. Um, there, there we go. And again, like that's gonna kind of continue to fade away. I'll add a little bit of white. And I'm keeping my brushes wet so that the paint stays sort of soft and flowy looking and doesn't look too hard. Cause I, I'm trying, what I'm trying to do is get rid of that, those hard lines from my stencil that I originally used. Like right here, you can really see them still. So I'll have to go back over that. And it's just paint. So if I end up not liking it, I'll, um, I'll just paint over it. No big deal. Go ahead and get a little bit more on here. So what kinds of quotes or things do you think would go good in the center of a sign like this? I'd love to get some of your feedback for that. Um, let's see. There we go. Hitting those little U's from the side. There we go. Kind of going over the top of those. Just kind of adding more layers. I can still, I don't want to totally cover up the texture that I created to begin with. But as you can see, I'm just kind of going over, going over those areas again, just kind of like Almost like they're like a little bit camouflaged in the background. And I'll probably have areas where it's like heavier with the white and thicker um, than other areas here. Okay. Yeah, what kinds of things do you think, like I feel like a name would go nice there or a quote about someone or someone, someone that passed away, some of their favorite, maybe one of their favorite quotes would be really nice in the center there. Um, I am going to soften up this line too, just because I feel like it doesn't, <clears throat> it doesn't look like it belongs. Um, looks too hard. Like I want, I want the wording to be framed out, but I don't want it to be so hard that it looks out of place. Um, Barbara says, this would be a great gift for someone who lost a loved one. You could put their loved one's name in the space. That's what I was thinking. That would be nice. <clears throat> okay. So I'm going to do a little bit more black on this side because I haven't done it yet. And then I think I'll probably start adding layers of wax and I'll start shading out some of the, maybe some of the edges. We'll do some, you know, some white areas and just kind of blend give the outside edge some texture too and some interest. So I'm just gonna kinda go over this with the midnight sky. And again, if it looks like it's like dry, I'm gonna, I, I want it to look like it's blended. So I'm gonna keep my brush wet, keep that paint moving um, in the right direction there. I think my brush still needs a little bit more water. And this would, you could do wings on um, ornaments or, you know, whatever. It doesn't have to be just on wood. Here we go. Okay, I think that's pretty good. I'm gonna, I feel like that's really heavy with the gray. So I'm just gonna kind of move it around with my finger a little bit and some water. 
And there we go. Okay. Um, now, I have Sterling Silver Gilding Wax. See you all of a sudden. Oh, that's so sweet. See you all of a sudden. Love it. Tammy. Um, all right, let me just see what happens to do, do. I think I'll do, probably do the gilding wax last actually because it's oil based and I don't wanna mess around with that too, too much while I have working with still some water-based color, uh, water-based wax. So I'm gonna start with the water-based wax. I'm gonna try, I just wanna see what the grunge gray looks like on top of this. Um, just gonna get it, I'm actually gonna, because this is a water-based wax, I can, actually get it, um, I can add a little bit of water to the finish. Um, I think what I'm gonna do is grab a bigger chip brush here. And I'm gonna add some layers with that. Hi, Jennifer. Um, so I've got my premium chip brush here. I'm just gonna, it's damp. Um, and I'm just gonna add some, tap on some wax. I'm just gonna pop, kinda play around and see what happens, tapping off the extra, and I'm just gonna kinda pull. It's a little bit lighter than the board. It's not like much lighter, but it's a little bit lighter. So I'm just gonna, and I have to remember that this is still wet, so I have to be kinda careful when I'm going over it. But I do, I think maybe I'll add a little bit of white paint. That's the beauty of, um, that is the beauty of the Dixie Bells. You can kind of, you can use the products together. You don't have to, so I put a little water and a little white and a little of the grunge gray on there. I'm just kind of moving, <clears throat> moving it around a little bit. Um, but I have like a very little bit on my brush, so I'm kind of being careful about how much paint I have on here. I'm just going to continue to add layers um, just to kind of add interest to this. And kind of blend it together, even though obviously I want my angel wings to be like the star of the show. I'm going to kind of blend, blend out the white just a little bit. Soften that up a little bit too. There's a little bit more water on that side. I'm gonna go ahead and go over this area here and then smooth it out. It's a little bit scary when you're working with something like this to kind of go over it with a wet brush because you don't wanna to pull too much of your work. You don't wanna to smear too much of it but I also kind of want to soften it up. So I'm just kind of going over the whole thing, almost like a really light color wash. All right, then let's see what happens when I add a little bit of the dark wax. So I've got black wax here. Just gonna play around with all these shades and we'll just kind of see what happens. I'm tapping off the extra, sorry about that. And I'm gonna give the edges a little bit of contrast there. You can see what, look at what that black wax does to the edge. It really does make like a big difference. You don't need a lot of product. Um, just using a little bit of the wax, just kind of gonna frame this out a little bit here, darken up the edge. Let's see, I need a little bit more wax on my brush. Just kind of framing that out a little bit. And then it'll feel like the wings are kind of light in the center, and as it goes out, it gets darker. Clara, just doing some angel wings tonight, my friend. What are you working on? 
Clara, if you guys haven't been over to her page yet, you guys, Clara Gonzalez from Clara's Candy Furniture. She is an amazing furniture artist. You need to go check her out. She does amazing live videos. She's the queen of blending. Um, she just does beautiful work. I'm always in awe of her work. So I'm just kind of giving, almost like I'm kind of like going around the edges so that the wings, wings will feel like they have a little bit of a glow to them. Like I've got a little bit of the wax coming into the middle. So see how I've got a little bit of extra wax there. I'm not gonna get in a panic. I'm just gonna take a little bit of my wet cloth and just kind of wipe it away. It's no big deal. Cause it's all gonna get blended in the end anyway. Um, so, and then I might do a little bit, like I might just do a little bit of wax up here. Use a smaller brush if you're afraid that you're gonna mess something up. You can always use a smaller brush and kind of blend out. Um, it's a little bit easier that way. Um, well, it's true, Clara, you are amazing. Um, I'm not just saying that, my friend. Okay. Um, so kind of darken around the edge and then you kind of see how these are starting to come to life with a little bit of um, layering, right? And this isn't my typical tutorial. I don't know what got into me. I was like dead set on doing some angel wings tonight. Um, usually it's just like the cutesy cricket stuff, like which I did use my cricket for this, but usually it's a little bit more um, fun, fresh sort of ideas that are... Um, like trendy and decor, but tonight I just thought this would be nice with the holidays coming up. So I am gonna go over this. It's feeling a little bit dark around the edge still. Now that I have my black wax shading it out, I am gonna go in with a little bit of the white and I'm gonna really kind of move some of that white off my brush and then I'm gonna take a bigger brush so it's even Hold on, let me just get this wiped off. Hi, Rima. Hi, Cindy from Texas. Thanks for watching tonight. And I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of put a little bit, I have a little bit of watered down white on my tablecloth and I'm gonna wipe the extra off and then just kind of see what happens when I pull around the edges here. I just kind of want them to feel like they're highlighted, you know? I'm just gonna kind of, but I don't want it to feel, I want it to feel soft. I don't want it to feel like, um, like there's any hard lines, I guess. So that, that makes any sense. Same thing here. Okay, I'm gonna lighten that up just a little bit right there. It's a little bit dark. Okay. Um, and then, what do you guys think? Should I add a little bit of gilding wax on the wings? Let's just test it out and see what happens. Um, see what happens when we add a little bit. And I may actually wanna do a little bit of white, um, just a super light amount, um, just to kinda, almost like they're kinda like, like, See how this, this paint that I'm using, it's like my brush has barely any paint on it. It's um, it's a really more like a wash of color. It's really like a wash of white more than anything. And that's gonna soften everything up. Okay, just like that. And again, this is like no color, just... Okay, I'm gonna pull it down. You can still see my little um, lines behind. So I didn't, I haven't covered them up totally. They're still there in the background. And then I definitely wanna soften this guy up here. 
And then we'll do some gilding wax, I think, some silver gilding wax. We'll just kind of play around with it and see what happens. And I keep wiping my um, brush in like water that's on my table cloth. And I feel like if th those lines just looked way too hard, so I had to soften those up a little bit too. Okay. A little bit more white. There we go. How are we doing, you guys? What do you think? Look at all these yummy layers. Okay. Then silver gilding wax. We'll just see where it takes us, okay? And then if I wake up tomorrow and I feel like it's not quite right or I need to add a little bit of color to it, then I can certainly do that. If I wanna add, you know, a little pop of, you know, um, a different color. Like I do have the Stormy Seas here, which I was kind of playing around with using. Let's see what happens if I just add a little. It's like a, it's a really gray blue. Um, but I think the silver, and then maybe even if I could find some gold, I might do gold tomorrow on these too. That might be really pretty. Let's see what I can do with the Stormy Seas. See what happens with that. So Stormy Seas is a gray, uh, a gray blue. And oh my gosh, I'm a little bit nervous about adding this. But it might just do, give it like a little bit of something, something. There we go. What do you guys think? A little bit of the gray blue in there too. Eek! Just adds like a little something extra. And it just, oh gosh, I hope I don't live to regret this. It's okay. All right, what do you guys think? It's not, it's very subtle. So I feel like, but it needed, I almost feel like it needed a little color. Right? Okay. I'm, I, I don't want to get carried away with the stormy seas because I easily could. Oh, you did bath? I love that color. It's so pretty. So pretty. All right, so there's a little bit of stormy seas on there. Can you guys see that? Um, and then maybe a little bit of silver. Silver. I had to water it down because I had like very little left in my jar. But I have some silver glaze here. Is that wrong that I want to use that and the silver gilding wax um, just to add a little sparkle maybe even like I don't know some silver on the outside too but I'm, I'm a little bit nervous about that yeah the silver glaze is so pretty it's so subtle like it couldn't really mess it up too much I don't think Here we go. Just kind of pulls everything together a little bit. I like that a lot. And it may even be pulling some of the stormy seas that's still a little bit wet from, you know, but might be mixing that in a little bit too, which I'm totally fine with. Because again, I want to get rid of those hard lines. All right. Gilding wax, like I said. I keep, I keep, can you guys tell I'm a little bit scared of the gilding wax right now? Uh, let's try it. Let's just go for it and see what happens. All right, silver gilding wax. I'm gonna put a little on a brush and it's super dry, isn't it? I may have left the cover off of it. Um, let's just see what happens with this. I just wanna kind of play around with it a little bit. I think I'm gonna have to use a cloth give it a go. So the gilding waxes are um, oil based. There we go. So I can rub it and get a really pretty good metallic sort of feel from that. Um, just going to kind of go over some of these areas with that. Soften up that And you can use a lint-free cloth. I'm using a paper towel, which isn't 
always the best tool, but it's what I have on hand. So I'm going with it. There we go. It's gonna give it a little bit of shimmer, which is hard to pick up on camera at night, but tomorrow when I stage this um, for you guys, you'll see it a little bit better. So it kind of is like blending everything together. It's like kind of giving everything like a little more blended, softer feel, which I like. And then I think the edges need a little bit of the gilding wax too. We'll do some on the edge and just see kind of how it pops. It's not really showing up very well on the edge right now anyway. I think in the daytime though, it'll you'll be able to see it a little better. I'm just gonna kind of brush it in and kind of work it in a little bit because I definitely don't want that hard edge. Let me get rid of that. Yep, there we go. That's better. I'm probably ruining my brush right now, but it's okay. It's a cheap craft brush. All right. Oh, thanks, Kate. Hi, Kristen. All right, so I'm gonna do a little bit more gilding wax. Um, on the other side, again, if I were you, I would use, if I were using the gilding wax, I would definitely use a lint-free cloth. I'm going a little bit softer this time, just kind of working it in. Because again, I don't, what I don't want is like a super hard, line on the edges. I'm gonna kind of work that in a little bit. So can you guys see how that's giving it like a little bit of shimmer on the edge? And I'm just gonna keep doing that. Keep working that around the edge there. And then I may even, I'm just kind of working my brush into the gilding wax. I'm just kind of you know, working that around in little circles. I almost feel like it would be pretty all over the piece. What do you guys think? If I take a chip brush and go all over, let's see what happens. Um, okay. I'm just gonna rub my gilding wax into my chip brush and just see if I just work it. Oh yeah, there we go. Now we're cooking with butter. It's too pretty just to have around the edges, you guys. It really like, kind of like pulls the whole thing together. This is what I'm saying about using your layers, you know? Um, just the layers of things make things And then I could do maybe some gold somewhere, like little speckles on the wings themselves. I'm just kind of working that gilding wax into my brush here. Feels really, really pretty. I'm probably gonna regret doing wax before I do any lettering here because that's gonna make really, uh, it's gonna make for really tricky um, lettering. But I know that if I'm careful, I can, I can do it. Um, but if I were to do this like during a workshop or something like that, I would definitely do any sort of waxing after the, um, after the, after the lettering gets done in the center here. Okay, let's do some of the black. And then we'll kind of pull it together and see how it all is looking. A little bit darker around the edge. There we go. Just kind of like shadowing around the shape of the angel wings here. A little bit more I need to do there. And there we go. 
you can kind of feel them now. They look like they're a little bit more floaty than they were before. Um, and definitely from the very first stencil that we started with, this is a completely different, you know, sort of feeling, right? Um, when we first started, it was a very like, uh, what do you call? It was like a very um, straight line, very defined areas on the angel wings. And now it's soft and a little bit more flowy. I'm gonna go over it with a little bit more of the white because I want it. To, I want to brighten up those edges just a little bit. Probably gonna regret this too, but I'm gonna go for it and then we'll kind of wrap it up. Okay, I'm just putting a little bit of the fluff on my brush, wiping off the extra. It's almost like a, it's almost like a wash, but like a very, very subtle version. So I'm gonna move that around. I'm gonna make sure that I don't overdo it. I'm gonna wipe off the extra and just kinda work. I'm gonna have too much paint on my brush. I'm gonna work that in. And it's okay, don't panic. I'm gonna work that in with some water. don't want to put too much white on there. I'm just going to work it in. I'm just watering my thing again. Just kind of working that around here. There we go. Um, and I may fiddle with this a little bit more before I do any stenciling on it, but um, I definitely like that it's a lot softer than it was when we first started. So what do you guys think? Let me look this up. Okay. So I know that was a long video and very unlike what I normally do. Let me lift this up for you though. You can see there's like some dimension. It almost looks like it's on metal, um, which I really like. And I may add some color. We'll see. I'm gonna play around with it. I feel like it needs something more. Um, but whatever it's gonna be, it's gonna have to be kind of subtle because I don't wanna take away from the wings themselves that are in the middle. But I do kind of feel like I like that they're highlighted around the edge. It's darker, I mean, highlighted around um, the silhouette of the angel wings and then kind of it works out. And as it works out, it gets a little bit darker around the edges. So I see this side is a little bit lighter. So I'm gonna add a little bit of wax to that. And that's the fun of it is I can just kind of like play around with, um, with what I'm, you know, my different waxes and what I'm working with um, until I have it to really like where I want it to be. So now we've got some darker and then it works in lighter and um, I'll be thinking about what I'm going to add to the center and I'll definitely be posting a picture. Um, I hope this little angel wing tutorial was helpful to you guys in some way or inspires you to give your own set of angel wings a try. Um, those of you that are in the DIY decor makers group, my paid group for women who wanna learn how to use their Cricut and create beautiful stencils so they can make things for their home, their business, or inspiring DIY workshops. I will get this, um, this angel wing uh, SVG file uploaded into the group for you guys to use for free. Um, and if I can get it onto my main page, I will certainly try, but um, I'll keep you guys posted on that. So 
I hope you guys are having a wonderful, wonderful holiday season, and I will see you guys again soon on this page. Same time, same place. Thanks so much for being here tonight. Have a great night, guys. Bye.